Well, we're going to talk about situational disability once again, because it just happens to be on the 5th of July, a story comes out from Daily Mail. Mother throws newborn daughter out of a window to her death because she thought her child would ruin her career as an executive at Porsche. This is what I've been talking about is this is going to get someone killed. And I wouldn't be surprised if we now hear this type of rhetoric in a case law. Uh, it, you know, the last two years apparently of pushing this situational disability out there on the market. Who does it help? It doesn't help anybody. It just creates a situation where responsibility is thrown out the window. A woman has been jailed for seven and a half years after dropping her newborn daughter out a window because she was worried it would ruin her career. Well, maybe they will ruin your Elden Ring game. Katriana, uh, 28th. You know what? I don't need to go over all of this because we it, it's a story that comes up that happens to be exactly what I've been talking about when it comes to the situational disability. It's absolutely asinine. And here's a real world consequence of this being pushed out there on the market. Sure, they probably never heard of situational disability in Germany right now, because this is from a Microsoft document. But this is what I mean. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, we're not talking about a pause button, just an Elden Ring, where you suddenly have to put the game down to stop your kid from jumping out a window. No, we're talking about real world life consequences that have lasting effects on people that are trying to do their job, trying to play a video game. And at least with the video game, it's a leisure activity that you can put down to do and actually take the responsibility as a parent over your child. This is absolutely crazy. And it's just something that happened to appear on my feed over the speak of all of this. Hmm, I wonder why that is. The Microsoft inclusive design. You know, I get this. I honestly do get this. You want to make sure it's wheelchair accessible. You want to make sure you have elevators for your buildings. You want to make sure that everybody with a disability can access what they need to access and be included in what they're doing for their life, their job and everything else. The idea behind the Microsoft stuff, it sounds great on the surface. But when you get into this document and they talk more about situational disabilities, how someone in the moment happens to be distracted from driving, that is a huge red flag. And to me, this seems like it's a way to undermine the law and the courts, a way to, as a corporation, to put up there and, and lower insurance rates and not take things in a full responsible manner. So reading up on the Microsoft inclusion tool, there's a lot more in here. And Alan Pierce has completely disregarded what Microsoft is actually putting out here. Different people benefit by designing for someone with a permanent disability. Someone with a situational limitation can also benefit. For example, a device designed for a person who has one arm could be used just as effectively by a person with a temporary wrist injury or a new parent holding an infant. We call this a persona spectrum. I throw the spectrum out the window. The idea is, yes, you're designing something for someone with one arm, but what's the fallout of it? Who else does it help? It helps someone else that has a temporary arm, arm injury, or it may help out a new parent that can't put their child down. This idea behind it is a selling point in the world to say, listen, this is something that's going to benefit more than just the person with one arm. But by using this whole idea, then to turn around and say, okay, the new parent can now pause a game. That's completely misrepresenting what is going on in this scenario, completely throwing it out the window, like the lady that threw her newborn out the window trying to get 
a, uh, a, a trying to keep her job. That's not what that's for. That's completely not what that's for. So getting a more context out of here, you know, the distracted driver in this case, it's not that they're situationally a distracted driver, it's that it can help prevent them from being distracted. But instead it's, oh, this pause button is going to help a parent in the game from being able to look after their kid. Well, it's a very poor mismatch version of trying to show this scenario. It does not come across very well. And honestly, it, it, I still gotta say, I'm still gonna stand by it. Elden Ring doesn't need a pause button. There, there, there's no reason to put El a pause button in Elden Ring. You have the graces you can pause at. You have the tool tips that you can sit there and go the roundabout way to pause the game. But ultimately the game is designed pretty good. And if you die, you're not really losing progress. You, you lose a few steps, but you don't lose, you don't actually lose progress. And the way that they've designed every area, once you get to a checkpoint, they've added the checkpoints in that progress. So you're fine. I, the, it's the way it is. It's getting to the next checkpoint is the progress. That's what you're trying to do. And if you're seeing the game as, oh, I got to defeat this boss and I need to pause the game to pause my progress that's that you're you're missing the point of what you're playing with Elden Ring completely and I do not believe that you're playing Elden Ring in that sense I don't think that that's actually helping you in that sense and then you have hearing so you have deaf ear infection and then bartender here so something they're designing for deaf actually can help someone that's a bartender as well. So instead of it just being uh, the bartender putting on earplugs, they put on a headset where they can communicate through a mic set. Um, but what would deaf be? Well, I guess if you're deaf, but you can see, then it would be that they have a light on the stage and the bartender then can see that same light on the stage and react in the same way. That's the idea behind it, not this whole what we've seen on Twitter where it's oh the bartender is a situational uh, disability it's absolutely ridiculous that they're calling it a situational disability and trying to get uh, the laws and the courts on their side to say that it's going to help them in the long run they're doing this in a way to mitigate risk and that's the exactly what I'm saying in all of the videos on this and this is absolutely ridiculous that it's gone down this route. I did watch Alan Pierce's videos on, on these subjects and none of that came across like that, like the actual documentation from Microsoft, that it's, if it's going to help one person that actually has a solid disability, then who else is it helping? This is just a marketing tool. And that marketing tool is being used by Alan, like an activist, to try and push uh, push an agenda to say Elden, Elden Ring needs a, pu a pause button. And right now it's just fuel to the fire and it's absolutely ridiculous that it's gotten down to this scenario. Anyway, I'm your Prokinian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>